Hi everyone and welcome to my homeschool room. I wanted to give you a little tour of my room today. I'm going to turn the camera around in just a minute and give you kind of a 360 look at the room. But I'm going to come back and show you and spend a lot of time on these three bookshelves because that is where the majority of our homeschool supplies are, right here on these three bookshelves. And so I hope that encourages you as you're watching. You guys, I have fit four kids, schoolwork for four kids, plus a preschooler, plus a little box for a toddler. So that's six kids right here on these three bookshelves. And so you can put these bookshelves in a living room, a dining room, in your kitchen, um, in a bedroom, wherever you have space that you're gonna homeschool. You don't have to have a separate classroom like I do. And actually, I don't normally have a homeschool room. It's kind of a unique thing for us this year. So you'll notice when we do the 360, there's not a lot of other supplies out there. I've got two maps and two whiteboards, and that is about it. Everything else is right here on these shelves. So let's go ahead and take a 360 look at the room, come back, and I'll show you how I've organized these bookshelves. Here's a 360 of my homeschool room. There's our whiteboard where we do our spell to write and read work. And here is my bookshelves that I told you about. That's where um, the majority of our homeschool supplies are stored. Right over here is a wardrobe from when this was my oldest daughter's bedroom and we don't have um, any closets in here. So that actually stores our printer and then just a lot of other random supplies and things from around the house that just needed a place to go. There is our world map. And when we didn't have a classroom, we just kept that on our shelf and unfolded it on the floor when we needed to look at it. So again, you do not have to have a classroom to homeschool. There is another map, I got that for a dollar at Target. Right over here is another whiteboard with, right up here is all about our homeschool, the name of our school, our mission statement, and our motto. That's on a whiteboard right above my desk. And that basket right there is where the kids put any papers that need to be graded. And then take you around, there's a window. We're right back where we started. You can see that we just have one of those tables we picked up well, actually my parents picked up from Costco and we are borrowing it from them. We usually homeschool at our dining room table. We don't normally have a school room, so we're just kind of borrowing that for this year. All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip the camera back around and show you exactly how I organized everything on these three bookshelves. We've turned around the camera and now I'm gonna show you how I have organized these bookshelves. The first thing that I wanna show you is where I keep all the schoolwork and binders for each of my kids. So again, I have a first grader, third grader, fifth grader, and seventh grader, plus a preschooler and a toddler. But let's look at the school age kids first. So over here on this shelf, right here, this has all of my first graders schoolwork. This section right here, right over here is her schoolwork. Over here is all the teacher's manuals and binders and things that I need to teach first grade. So this is her shelf. All the way across on the other side over here is my third grader's schoolwork. And so his goes to about, let's see, right about there is his, and then the rest of it is all the binders and teacher's manuals and things that I need to organize third grade schoolwork and to teach third grade schoolwork. Right up here on this shelf is for my seventh grader. Her schoolwork goes to right about here. So these are all her binders and her textbooks. And then right over here are my teacher binders and manuals for teaching seventh grade. Then on this shelf is for my fifth grader. Again, all her schoolwork, binders, textbooks, all of that right there. And then over here are the binders that I need. And I had a few, a little bit of extra space. So these are just some random, books that I know and workbooks and things that I know that we're going to use throughout the year with different children. Just tuck those in there because I had a little bit of extra space. Now if you notice the different heights, this is for my seventh grader because she is high enough she can reach this. Fifth grader is a little bit shorter. First grader and third grader need the shelves to be a little bit lower because I want them to be able to reach their own schoolwork, access it so they can work a little bit more independently. Now over here on this shelf, this is what I call my language shelf. This is where I keep the majority of the stuff for language arts. So up here I have spell to write and read games. So I have a tub right here and it is full, you guys, of games for spell to write and read. I also have 
another little I have a, another this is full of games as well and then I have the what is this called the game board for the spell to write and read game so this is just fun games for implementing spelling and phonics and learning how to read so all of that is up there this shelf right here is more spell to write and read stuff my SWR books the wise guy I have two you pull those out here I have two boxes here oh, they're gonna fall okay I have two boxes here this is phonograms and rule cards so this is where I store all of the phonograms for the spell to write and read program I have them labeled by cursive ones print A to Z multi-letter phonograms the advanced phonograms and the rule cards I don't know if you can see that but so that is in that box this box has sandpaper letters. I'm not sure if you can read that label or not, but it has all the sandpaper letters. Oops, that's upside down. There you go. So all this stuff that I use for spell to write and read, cursive first, um, is on this shelf over here. All right, let me see if I can put these back up and we'll keep going. All right, on this shelf I have um, whiteboard markers and a whiteboard eraser. That's for the whiteboard that's over here. I want to keep them close for when I'm using the whiteboard. And then this shelf is full of readers, books for my kids to read, as well as the book links from BJU Press that my kids will be using this school year. So that is our language area right there. Then like I said, this was my shelf for my first grader. And then down on the bottom, is another shelf. I'm going to pause the camera so I can adjust it so you guys can see what is down here. All right, I've moved the camera down a little bit so you can see these bottom two shelves. This shelf is for my preschooler and this one is for my toddler. Let me go ahead and pull things out so you can see what is on there. These are things that they can only get to during school time. So it's supposed to kind of keep them busy and keep them excited about doing things during school hours. Now, on this shelf, I'm gonna pull it down here on the ground but I will hold things up and show you. I have some workbooks for him. I got these two workbooks for I think a dollar at Target Target. This one is from Rod and Staff. I have the whole series, so he'll just be working through those. I do not care if he just scribbles on these pages. It doesn't matter. This is just for him to do, to kind of keep him busy and help him feel like he is a big kid and doing school with his big siblings. I also have this binder for him. Now this one is from last year, and so I'm going to clean it up a little bit so it looks fresh and new and exciting for this year. But we have some whiteboard markers and a little um, eraser there and then I just have different worksheets that I have printed off from online or created myself I put them in just a clear plastic sleeve he can write on those and erase them now as you can see he wrote on these last year and never really erased them so like I said I'm gonna clean that up so it looks fresh and new and he's excited to use it this next school year he also has his own art supply box again he can only use this during school time so it gets a little exciting he gets excited to do school because he gets to pull this box out so in here he has scissors I normally do not give my preschooler scissors but he is actually quite good at scissors and has shown that he doesn't cut other things like you know siblings hair or anything like that so as long as he's being responsible which he has shown he he can be the last few months he's gonna get to keep those scissors in there he also has a glue stick I let him cut and rip paper and just glue it together to his heart's content I also have some crayons and some of those do a dot art um, paint and some markers and the other thing they'll probably throw in here is some stickers as well now on this bottom shelf is this little tub here I think I picked this up from the 99 cent store and it is empty right now but what is going to go in here are toys for my toddler that can only be used during school time and when he gets bored of whatever toy is in here I'll take it out and put some new ones in as well so that is everything on these bottom shelves here let's go ahead and turn the camera back well, not turn it around but move it back up so I can show you what is on the upper shelves on those other two bookshelves 
All right, let's go ahead and look at this bookshelf now. On the top, I have an empty basket, you guys, an empty basket. I actually have two empty baskets this time. If you saw my video where I was organizing my classroom, you guys, I organized and cleaned out a lot of stuff. I actually have empty space up here. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Now, up here as well, I have um, some... Matthew C. textbooks that my kids are still working through, so those are up there. And I have some salt boxes that I use with my younger kids when they're learning how to form their letters. We do that in the salt box. I also have another basket that's full of CDs and DVDs. Um, some of them are instructional for me and for the kids, some fun things. Those are just stored right up there. Again, I told you this is the shelf for my seventh grader, shelf for my fifth grader, and then right down here, I'm looking in the camera and I don't think you can see it very well. So let me pause the camera and zoom in over here. Okay, I think you can see things a little bit better here. I am just amazed at how many different angles and the way I have to move the camera so many times just to show you my bookshelves. But hey, we are going to get this done. So this is the shelf where we keep paper and pencils and scissors and glue sticks. So I have the, um, you know, that lined paper for my younger ones. We've got wide rule, we've got college rule. I've got some stickers down here. If you saw how I set up my first graders binders um, in or her, one binder, she has one binder. Um, we use these stickers for her checkoff list. So those are down there. Over here we have our pencil sharpener. This is a classroom friendly supply pencil sharpener. Absolutely love it. I also back there have colored pencils as well as just regular pencils and um, pens. Over here we've got a container that has scissors and glue sticks. We've got a box of crayons. We have markers back here. And then we've got Sharpies as well and highlighters. So that's kind of our school supply paper pen pencil shelf. Now down here, it's kind of hard to see because it's a little dark, but I have got some dictionaries here, thesauruses, and then maps and atlases are right over here. And then down here on the bottom shelf, you can only see a teeny bit of it, but these are our encyclopedias. Now, these were passed on to me. My mom gave them to me. They used to be for my siblings and I when we were kids. I would not go out and purchase encyclopedias for homeschooling. If you have, you know, if somebody's gonna donate them to you for free or you see them at a garage sale for a super, super cheap price, they do come in handy. I love having them here and using them. Instead of my kids just Googling everything or us having to take a trip to the library, it's nice to have them here and that we can learn how to look up information in them, but definitely not necessary. So don't think you have to have encyclopedias to homeschool. Now you see this nice blank shelf here. Well, it is not going to remain blank. I am getting BJU Press, their elementary Spanish curriculum. It comes with a DVD for my kids to watch. All four of my school age kids are going to be doing it, and I bet you my preschooler and my toddler are going to sit in on it as well. But all that stuff is going to go right there. We are on to the very last bookshelf. Now, right up here is another empty basket. I can't believe how much extra space I have when I clean things out real good. If you're wondering what on earth was on these shelves that isn't there anymore. Well, I actually had stored some books that have nothing to do with homeschooling on here and I found a new place for them. But also, I had a lot of homeschool supplies on here like um, just work workbooks and different resources that I realized I wasn't really going to access or need this year, so I stored them away in my tubs. And so if you're curious about how I organize stuff that I'm not going to be using for the current school year, but I want to save, I have a video for that. I'll try to remember to link that down below. So that basket is empty. This shelf was empty as well, and I figured, hey, why not? I have the space. We'll put a tissue box on there. We've got our tape and um, a stapler. Normally, I would just try to squeeze those down on this shelf. And in the very back, I have index cards. I usually keep the index cards with the paper, but I was finding last year that my younger ones were pulling them off and using them to color on, which is okay every now and then, but when they use up a whole 
fresh pack of index cards, well, it gets a little expensive. So I'm putting them up here just so that the older kids can reach and if my younger ones need them or I'm gonna let them color a special picture on it, I'll get them down for them. Right here is my math shelf. And so this has all of my teacher's manuals for math you see that I will be using. Um, this year, actually, it has all of them for their elementary level, math levels, all of the DVDs, the math fraction, I'm going to say math fraction, not math fraction, the fraction overlay kit. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So I have that here. I also have four Life of Fred books on here. I've got a little clock, and this is where we keep our calculator as well. And then in this box right here is just math facts. Let's show you right here. So just math fact flashcards that my kids can practice drilling their facts with. I also stored the rulers in here because rulers we usually use when we're doing math or something. So I put those in there as well. And then I also, I also have a couple other things that I will show you. Let me see if I can just get those out. Okay. Well, let me show you what else I have in that tub. I have this little template from Matthew C. for Decimal Street. Love this, so helpful. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, so helpful in teaching your kids place value. And then the clock for Matthew C. I also have these um, fast fact multiplication and addition and subtraction sheets, and I think there's a division one as well. So I've got those in there so my kids can also use those to practice their math facts. So all of those are on kind of my math shelf. Then down here I told you was where my third graders work is. I've got two more shelves on the bottom that are also math related. So if you kind of notice, that bookshelf way over there that you can't see in the picture right now in the, in the screen, that was my language section. This one I try to have more math stuff. So I've got three shelves for math. That's what's on the bottom too as well. So I will lower the camera again and show you what's down there. We are on to the last two shelves of this homeschool room tour, and these two are math related as well. This shelf has my Matthew C block manipulatives, and so I'm going to show you those in just a minute. Down here has some other math manipulatives as well. So let me pull those off and show them to you. All right, this is my Matthew C block kit where I keep all of our Matthew C blocks. I just find that a tub like this is just a lot easier for my kids. They can dig around and find what they need. Now, this is more than one kit. You guys, I was so blessed probably about 10 years ago, three or four years into my homeschooling journey, um, I had only purchased one set of Matthew C blocks because that's really all we could afford at the time. And another homeschool mom said that her friend was part of a private school. I don't know if it was shutting down or they were switching curriculum or just getting new supplies, but they had been using Matthew C and they had all of their blocks. And this, this friend of hers had passed them all on to her and she was selling them to very cheaply to um, some of us in the homeschool community. And so I snagged up several different sets. And so I have got a lot of Matthew C blocks. So I don't even know how many sets are in here, a couple for sure. I ended up buying more than I needed and passed them on, and ended up passing them on to other people. But that is my Matthew C blocks right there. And then I also have one more Matthew C. This is the Algebra Decimal Kit. What this is is probably roughly one set of blocks plus the um, algebra decimal little, I don't know what they're called, just snapping things to help make sense of algebra and um, decimals uh, in the um, percent and, what is the one she's doing? Percents, fractions and percents. Oh my goodness, my mama brain. So anyways, that's how I store those up on this shelf right here. So the kids, the little ones and the big ones can get to that easily. All right, down here I just kind of have some fun math stuff. This is stuff that my younger ones will do and my older ones like to do it as well, but they're usually busy with their other schoolwork. So these are geo boards. These are really fun for the kids just to make different designs on the boards with rubber bands. I also have some time matchup puzzles for the kids that are learning how to tell time. And then I have in this tub right here, I've got pattern blocks. So if you don't know what pattern blocks are, there they are. And I have these fun little boards that the younger ones can 
do the pattern blocks on. I also have this great um, pattern block book that I picked up a long time ago, but it just has a whole bunch of different animals in it, and the kids just have to figure out how to fit pattern blocks on here to make those animals. So that's just another kind of fun activity that we do sometimes when we want to just change things up a bit. So there you guys go. I'm going to try to fit all these in here. So that is the last little shelf of my homeschool room tour. I hope this was helpful for you and encouraging to you. You guys, this is my homeschool classroom or my homeschool room, whatever you want to call it. But Really, everything that I have is stored right here on these three shelves, besides some maps and some whiteboards. Everything else is on these bookshelves. So if you have just a small space in your home that you can fit enough bookshelves to hold however many kids you have, their stuff, you can totally homeschool. You don't have to have maps on the wall, like I said, I think earlier. I think I said it earlier, but you could take those maps down and keep them on the shelf and just lay them out on the floor. Sometimes that's more fun. The kids and you can just lay on the floor and talk about the different places and look up close at the places on the map. And whiteboards aren't necessary either. They are helpful, you guys, to have a whiteboard up, but not necessary. We usually homeschool out in our main living area. And when we do that, I just use whiteboards just like this. Just some little whiteboards like that. And I'd sit down next to the kids and we do the schoolwork on those. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed this homeschool room tour. I will see you guys in another video. Bye-bye. Thank you.